Here you go, a quick video for you about running an inverter from an electric car. I have a Xantrex 2000 watt maximum inverter connected up to my 2023 Chevy Bolt EV. Um, I am using some two gauge cabling, uh, Anderson Quick Disconnect. And on the positive side of this, I'm connected right at the, uh, where the positive goes from the battery into the fuse box. And for the negative, um, straight back there, uh, the body ground right where the negative cable connects. So it's copper to copper on the negative instead of cable to the body somewhere here. And if we look at the display, uh, we're at 14.7 volts on the 12 volt battery and we're drawing 1.2 kilowatt. And the reason why is because we've got a space heater down here. I have it set to high, so it's pulling 1200 watts. Now, if we take a look at my meter here, set to measure current, we're drawing a little bit less than 100 amps of current. Let's say it was an even 100 times 12 volt nominal, 1200. Um, we're actually higher than 12 volt. So you can certainly see there's some losses. Um, and since we're at 100 amps, are these cables warm? No. Uh, the inverter is a little bit warm to the touch. You can hear there's uh, some cooling fans on it running. And then for the actual power system in the car, uh, the DC to DC inverter is running. The car is on. And if you look and listen carefully, um, every once in a while, we'll actually see and hear a little bit of uh, coolant cycling through. Um, any of the car parts that I touch, they are not hot. This right here is like barely, barely warm. I mean, it's like just over room temperature. Uh, the other thing I wanted to check temperature wise was my connection right here at the positive. So I figure that would be kind of the one weak point or might have the most resistance right there. Uh, it's a little warm to the touch. It's not bad, uh, but I can definitely tell, you know, there's current going through there. Um, I've got a 200 amp circuit breaker tucked right under here and I'm just feeling touching the end. That's, it's warm. I can tell there's current going through there. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is I am getting some uh, voltage drop. So if I measure voltage at the battery and then over here, um, I'm getting about 0.4 volt drop. Um, I'd like to have less than that because if the DC to DC converter cycles off, we're running just on the 12 volt battery and we have the 100 amps coming in here. Uh, it's really going to drop the voltage of the battery, and then that can actually uh, then drop this below the minimum voltage required and shut down. But I'm also intentionally running this pretty hard by having the 1200 watt heater here uh, running through it. Um, normally, uh, I would be using less than this. Uh, one thing that's kind of nice, if I click down to medium on here, uh, this draws about 700 watts. Let's see what it is in a moment. A little less than that right now. Um, inverter works great. Uh, we're also drawing a lot less current. So like right now, 56, 57 amps. And it all runs great. And that's kind of what I'm imagining using for a power backup. Uh, my furnace uses maybe 500 watts max, and then cycles between two and 400 watts uh, while the furnace is running. And of course that cycles on and off. Uh, my fridge is actually pretty similar. So the fact that I've been able to run this for um, over an hour straight uh, with no issues at 700 to 1200 watts seems to be a pretty good sign. I think the main thing though, is I think I'm gonna shorten these cables. They're a little long. That's just because that's how long the cables were when I got them and I repurposed them. Uh, no reason to make them shorter when you can never make them longer again. Uh, and then the other thing, I think a 150 amp uh, circuit breaker uh, is gonna be the right thing here. Uh, that should be good for 1800 watts, which is really the maximum uh, 
continuous uh, power of this inverter. That's it for now. This is kind of my experiments, figuring this all out, um, what makes the most sense.